Welcome to the Master Passive Income Show. My name is Dustin Heiner, and I'm here to help you learn how to quit that J-O-B, that just overbooked job, by investing in real estate so you never, ever have to work a job again. Today, I'm super pumped to bring on a fantastic student. And in fact, I talk about this student all the time. And so I'm so glad he's coming on the show. And the reason why I talk about him is because people... As you're starting to invest in real estate, you start thinking like, man, I'm not wealthy or I don't have connections. I don't have all these other people in my life doing it. No, we're regular everyday people. And the reason why I talk about this student is because he's a pastor and we have been able to help him start investing in real estate. And he's a normal, regular, everyday people just like us. And pastors, if you don't know this, pastors don't make much money. In fact, they may probably make no money at all. And so they just realize that pastors don't have money. And with that... It's also a blessing to be able to invest in real estate, to be able to provide for your family and obviously have a stable footing. So I have an awesome student. His name is Benjamin. Benjamin, Mr. Benjamin, the pastor, thank you so much for being on the show. All right. Thank you for having me, Dustin. Glad to be here. Now, this is fantastic. Now, like I said, I've talked about you on this show many, many times. I talked to other students. In fact, I even get DMs, you know, um, on social media uh, from other missionaries or pastors talking because I'm a Christ follower. Like if there's anything I'm going to preach, it's Christ and him crucified. That's the only thing I'll do. Outside of that, I can help anybody to invest in real estate or, you know, become financially independent. And so I get a lot of people coming to me or missionaries other pastors and saying, hey, I would like to invest in real estate, but it's scary or, you know, all these different thoughts coming to mind. And I bring you up and I said, oh, that it's everybody can do it. So you can too. So what got you started wanting to go down the path of investing in real estate as opposed to being, you know, a a full-time pastor and just solely focusing on that when you have the ability to also provide for your family in the real estate as well. But what got you started down that path? Yeah. So well, when I first listened to your podcast, I'm like, man, I don't want to quit my job. I like my job. But uh, the more I started listening, I realized, okay, this is actually something I can do and keep my job. Uh, because for me, this is not so much a job, but a calling. Uh, and in fact, I feel like many people are trying to do real estate to get to their greatest desire or to get to do their calling uh, where I'm already doing it and then trying to jump into real estate afterwards. Uh, so that, I mean, that was part that got me into it. You know, my church is good. Uh, they do well taking care of me, uh, but we have all of our needs met and that's about it. And as I started listening to your podcast, I'm like, hey, he's talking to guys that uh, can start from zero. And so I was like, all right, I pretty much am at zero. And there's options for the guys from that can go from zero to rental properties and started to work through the method and the process with you got and you know, went from zero to now I've got two rental properties and looking to scale up more this year. But yeah, that's that's basically how I got into it. Uh, and my wife and I were sitting there looking at our savings. Actually, met with a, a financial planner, and he's like, uh, "Your retirement stinks." <laughs> and uh, but then the plan he offered stunk. So I was I was looking for other options. My wife and I were kind of looking around. I was like, "Man, it's hard to save. It's hard to put money towards retirement. Hard to fix up our house." I was like, "Well, something has to change." But it's not what I'm currently doing as my career because I really feel like where I'm at is what God wants me to do. So that uh, finding your podcast, I actually just did a search for investing off um, uh, just just looking up and your podcast popped up. I did passive investing. That's what it was. And uh, found you and then started listening in. Eventually called you on the phone. That's how I got there. That's so awesome. And being able to see the, uh, really getting a, a broader perspective of what's out there. Obviously, you know, a financial planner might work well for most people. Uh, that might work ju- work out just fine. But when you don't have a lot of money coming in, how do you save that money? Or how do you, you know, invest it as opposed to what with you, not having that much savings, but you did have, you were blessed to be financially a good steward, to be able to buy a house at a certain time where you were able, you know, financially with as little pay as you get to be able to buy a house. But then with that, being able to utilize that equity to then buy a property, which we'll get into in just a second. Talk to me about when you started looking at real estate investing and then working with the the whole master passive income business model where we're, we basically build the business first, we make sure that we're going to be making money in passive income. How did that resonate with you to help you to say, you know, this is the path that I want to go down as opposed to stocks or mutual funds or anything like that? Uh, stocks and mutual funds are in my turn way of pretty much future, way future planning. Like they're really slow and they're really volatile. 
And you really have to have quite a large amount of capital, I feel like, to put in there to do well. And when you start looking at if I can put $100 a month into a stock, you're like, that's, that's not much. And it's not going to go far. And it's going to be a long time, a long time. Uh, so the master passive income model uh, allowed for more work up front, but a, not a, I wouldn't say a fast return, but a quicker return, one that I can use in the more uh, near future than the far future. Uh, and then your business model I really liked because I am a planner. I'm a, a processor and your business model is let's plan everything up front. Let's run all the numbers. Let's connect with all the right people. Let's set everything up so that your margin for error is almost zero. And in fact, that's sort of what sold my wife on it because she has no risk tolerance. And I began to walk her through like, okay, here is the setup. Here's the plan. Here's the numbers that she was like, okay, this is still a risk, but it's much, much smaller risk. I think yours and my wife would get along famously. She, my wife has, would have prefers it. It was so hard to get her to want to invest or, you know, be willing to, in fact, it was, I didn't have any money of my own. We got married and she had like, she was the one that saved and she had like 10 or $15,000. And I said, Hey honey, can I take the money that you saved and brought to our marriage? Can I use that to buy real estate? Praise the Lord. She eventually said yes. Now she doesn't even have to think. I mean, it's like, she knows a business model works. We've been doing it for 15, 17 or however many long years now doing this investing that now it's, it's literally we don't do anything in the business unless we're going to make money, unless we know we're going to make money. We already have people in place that's going to run it. Now, one thing that I love to share is that as you're being a pastor, you obviously don't make that much money, but you have equity. You have the ability to potentially utilize something like, let's say, equity in a house, um, equity in something else. But basically, it's not like you you were able to save tens of thousands of dollars of your own money, which you know, obviously very little when you're a pastor. But talk to us about the process of being able to utilize something as creatively financed as, as a home equity line of credit, then eventually cashing out and paying off the home equity line of credit until you have the properties and long-term notes. Talk to us about that first property and how we got that. Yeah, that uh, really hearing your podcast, reading, I did a lot of book reading, started to realize that it's not just you have to have eighty, hundred thousand dollars in the bank to get going or two hundred thousand dollars to buy a house. There's a lot of options out there. So praise the Lord. Like you said, we bought a house a few years ago uh, and then the equity went up quite substantially as the market increased. And I'd never even heard of a HELOC. Uh, home equity line of credit, did not know they existed. Only thing I'd heard was uh, uh, refinancing and pulling out cash that other homeowners had done. So HELOC was a way to get into the real estate market and actually make purchases. So we pulled out equity on our residence, which my wife hates, but she's accepting it. Uh, she knows the risk. But she's also accepting it, saying this is worth the risk and uh, we're willing to move forward again because she got to see the numbers and see how it worked. And so that was just a provision from the Lord to say, OK, here's a way we can do it. Uh, and and that was probably the other big thing. And I was locked into one idea of real estate investing, that landlords were just wealthy people. And you had to be wealthy to even to become a landlord. And no, it actually can be an average person who doesn't have much who can use a few creative ideas, uh, put in some legwork. It's not all easy, but putting legwork and and actually have a rental property or two or malt more. And when I started working with you, we, we were doing the one-on-one -on -one coaching. And sadly, I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching anymore. I just don't have the time anymore. But obviously, Benjamin, he's been around with me for a while. And we definitely, like I would definitely consider Benjamin, you, a friend. Like we pray for each other whenever we get on the calls and everything. It's such a blessing to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. And then seeing... This transformation, not trans, that's, that's, a, that's a big grand word, but like the growth and the change that you now have properties, you're now seeing that, the, that it's possible to continually grow and scale. Now, talk to us about this first property. Where was it? Uh, talked about the, maybe the purchase price, um, how much equity you were able to capture, and then how much passive income we were making on it? Yeah, so the first property was pretty, like it took a while. Like it took a lot of a while of shopping. This is where the coaching was so helpful because I looked at a lot of properties that probably would have sank me. 
uh, they were bad buys. They were too much work. Um, and Dustin kept saying like, eh, let's move on to the next one. Let's move on to the next one. This one's not right. So having a coach was really beneficial in that process of just helping you know what kind of house to look for, uh, what to not waver on. So finally found a house and had a decent price, uh, needed some rehab. And, and yet they were, they were willing to negotiate. They brought it down. We went back and forth a little bit. That's one of Dustin's skills, not mine. I'm working, we're working on it, how to be a negotiator. Uh, but uh, he's great with that. So worked on negotiating the price down, got it to a good price and was able to uh, find a hard money lender. So he used the hard money lending along with the home equity line and credit, credit for the down payment and the house fixing, fixed it up, bought the house. Uh, and praise the Lord, we fixed it up in like two weeks. Property manager was great at that. She was on top of things. And then within another week, she found a tenant at the price we were asking to rent it for. And so it was vacant for a whole month. Like from purchase price to renter, they, it was all, only a month, which is pretty fast. And uh, they've been in the same tenants uh, and then refinanced the house into a fixed loan for 30 years and pulled the cash out and used that to pay back some of the HELOC. Um, and so that's that was just a great process. It wasn't a full payoff, but it was a most payoff. That's that's fantastic. Do you mind sharing, and you don't have to, do you mind sharing how much passive income you're able to make from this one property? Yeah, so this one's about $220 a month. A little lower than I wanted, but when I went to refinance, I could get a little higher than I'd initially planned. So we decided to go with that. Oh, and interest rates changed dramatically from purchase price to refinance. Within six months, interest rates are up about like three to four points. Well, that definitely eats into your passive income. And so in the market where the interest rate stays the same, it's very much more um, step by step. Like, okay, let's just go. Next step is refinance. And we already have that. But when interest rate starts adjusting, then it's a little more, you have to be a much more, much more aggressive in your, I guess, conservatively. Like if you're going to be getting a loan and right now, because in this type of market, you're pretty sure that the interest rates are going to go up. If you're already penciling in like 7%, maybe pencil on 8%, even if you might be able to get 7%. If you can still make the numbers work at 8%, you know, God forbid, it actually goes to 8%. Then you, okay, it still works. But if it stays at 7 then hey, you're good. So that's another great way. Now, talk to us about scaling, like being able to then move into more properties and eventually, not necessarily, like quitting your job is not something that everybody needs to do or wants to do, but we have the freedom to literally do whatever you want. Like I literally have the freedom to serve at my church all day, every day. I don't have to do anything because I don't have, a, have to be, you know, hamper down at a job, but that's, that's what I do. Like I said, I'm a Christ follower first and foremost. That's literally what I do. So if I need to, if I'm going to be discipling people, I'll literally do that all day, every day, because that's what Christ followers do. And so with that, having the freedom. So talk to us about the scaling portion and then hopefully leading into freedom in your life. Yeah, the scaling portion, you know, as I got into this, one of the revelations was that this takes a little longer than I realized. It's a little slow of a process. And part of it is because I already have something that I, is a priority to me. And, and so one of the, the realizations I had to come to is I had to set a priority in my life of like, what's, what's number one, two, three, uh, or four, and for me, it's uh, worshiping the Lord in the church ministry, my family, and then real estate. And so I realized real estate was getting squeezed out here and there, and that's okay. So it's, it's taken me a little longer to, to scale. Uh, I actually have two houses now. I was hoping to have a few more by the end of last year, but uh, scaling at this point is just calling people, um, calling different people for loans, looking for private money lenders, which I'm really looking for right now, um, or some different types of other lending, as well as continuing shopping for houses, seeing if you can find a good deal. Uh, and, and really my, my constraint is time. And that's, that's really where the constraints at. Like I enjoy it. It's fun. I really enjoy the real estate aspect. Uh, but trying to fit everything in life takes it just takes a little longer. 
Oh, I totally get it. Totally get it. Now, having the freedom, and you you brought this up, it was probably maybe a couple months ago, but with, like they say, missionaries or pastors and and people who are in ministry where they don't actively like work a job and then get paid for that work, you know, they're dependent on people supporting them. And and especially missionaries who are out in the field supporting them. Um, I do know of a friend who has multiple businesses. He's a missionary. He's he's been a missionary for many, many years, and he's a missionary, missionary in China. And he has multiple businesses that make him enough money to where he doesn't even need to do support. He's a missionary still, but he doesn't, obviously he has prayer support, but it's financial. Like he is literally living on his businesses that he creates. But how much better is it like to be like Paul, to be a tent maker where you're not dependent on that, but you can just completely serve the Lord. Like if you wanted to get out of, let's say you had a regular job, not you're not a pastor, but you're working doing something else and you want to do more ministry. How much better would it be if you didn't have to worry about that money? You could just start doing ministry. Ministry is every, ministry is service. That's what we do is we serve. So talk to me about now, the idea of you utilizing in like growing your portfolio over time, but then being able to be free to not quit, but let's say, God forbid, something happens financially and there's not enough money coming into the church, well, then you can serve. But like, talk to us about the freedom that you now would have as you continue to grow and the idea of like uh, missionaries and pastors, other Christ followers to be able to utilize this to help them in their ministry. Yeah. Uh, well, first to your comment, I'll say to the missionaries out there, aspiring missionaries, uh, the church supported missions model is slowly dying. And the need to support yourself on the mission field is increasing greatly. Now, a lot of things have contributed to that. But this is a, a plan that if you start now, I think within eight, five, however God provides, five, 10 years, you could be living off of your own business as opposed to living very uh, dependently on, on a church that may or may not be able to support you the following year. Uh, so yeah, my goal is to do that, just that for my own church, to be able to support myself and live off of my own income while still serving in the church. And then the church has funds to hire on other people or to support other people. And so that's the goal I'm pursuing right now for our church is that, uh, it would free them up as well as I have uh, an outside stability financially that God has provided through a secondary means. The blessing of making more money is added to the blessing of obviously financial independence, but with making more money, if you're a Christ follower, you're giving. And I looked at my wife, so we're doing our taxes and everything, and I got my giving statements for where everywhere we give. I looked at my wife, I said, can you believe we've been able, we've been blessed to give this much money? Like I never would thought I would have been able to give this much money. Like when we first got married, I was working a government job. I didn't have much money and it was just, we were just literally living, you know, paycheck to paycheck. Now we're just giving, I'm not going to say, but giving enough money that it blows my mind. I'm like, Praise the Lord that we have the ability to give and to serve in that capacity, whereas we know people who don't believe in, in, in God, they don't necessarily give to church. They don't necessarily give to missionaries. But hey, we have the ability to, because we worked hard, be good stewards. And I love how Christ says that if we are, well, first, number one, we're either slaves to sin or slaves to righteousness. We want to be slaves to righteousness. With that, God has us as servants, but I like to, the actual term it would be a slave. But we're a slave to righteousness and just an unworthy slave doing what I'm commanded. Commanded by the Lord to be good stewards of the things he's blessed me with, from sharing the gospel to sharing finances and, and just wisdom and, and everything and, and discipleship. So with that, talk to me, what are your thoughts about the aspect of more with more coming in, you're blessed to be able to give even more and serve the Lord in that capacity. Well, I think that right there is you give the, the, the freedom actually to do what we're doing. The, the, I have to get rich actually is enslaving. It puts me in, in bondage and makes me so stressed out about the wealth I gain. Whereas having a purpose, to like I'm gaining this for the one I serve and I'm gaining this to give is actually a very freeing thing. And then the results are up to him and how the money is used is already determined. Um, and, and really that's the biblical principle is works that you can give. And, and so I, I see that 
doing that really is inspirational. And it's a, a God-given inspiration to do the process. And re- even recently, you know, this is somebody was doing a missionary effort that needed some funds. And I'm like, you know what? My real estate business has a little bit of extra money in it. Let's support it. And already they pulled to have that opportunity. And uh, I was like, wow, like you said, that was able to be done. I couldn't have done that six months ago, a year Praise ago. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I, I love the fact that we, when you have more money, you're able to give and you should give. That's literally what we're called to do. It's part of our, our service to the Lord and our worship to the Lord is in the giving. And what is, I, I just love the idea that we as Christ followers store up treasures in heaven. And when you, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that pastors or missionaries don't store up treasures in heaven at all, but you're getting paid by, you know, by the congregation, by the church, you're getting paid and you're also storing up treasures in heaven. How much more so if you don't need to get that money and you're just giving that much more of your time, more of yourself, you're just storing Mm -hmm. up even more treasures in heaven because you're just like, like when Christ says like, you got your pay right then and there, obviously if you have somebody's, uh, you know, below, look at me, how much I'm giving all that sort of stuff. They got their reward right there. How much better when Christ or the father who's, who's in season secret will reward you. I love the fact that I could just store up treasures in heavens. I don't need any money from anybody else. I could just serve until I'm dead. That's the, that's the beauty of being financially independent. Absolutely. And that's what we're looking forward to. So is there any lessons, obviously being uh, a pastor, being on uh, very, very low income, but any lessons that you've learned that you can share along the way for any pastors or any missionaries or anybody that could be in a similar position where they have very little money, but they know that they want to get out of this. They want to start uh, to change. But any lessons that you've gone through and you've learned through this time? Um, Yeah, there's quite a few lessons. First of all, get your wife on board or your spouse, uh, and that might take some time. But if God's in it, they'll bring them. He'll bring them along. Uh, second of all, like there's quite a bit of work to put be put in, uh, especially up on the front side. So it does take extra time. Uh, for me, I actually am big into fitness. I love exercise, and I would put a lot of time into that. And one day, it kind of hit me do I want to be in shape in 10 years, like really in shape? Or do I want to have my family provided for in 10 years? So I uh, do a lot less exercise. I don't not do it. I just do it a lot less. Uh, so re- looking for where I can, what I can put aside, what's essential. And that for me turned into a non-essential. And then knowing that it's a process, it takes time. Uh, I think sometimes the, the huge success stories are unhelpful because you read them and you're like, hey, I could do that in, in a year. I'm like, no, it's probably more like five or 10 years. And so being content with the slow process. And then as Dustin's been helping remind me of, God's in control of this process. Like you can trust the Lord every step of the way. Like this, if your heart is genuinely using it for him, like this is his plan for you, then trust him. You don't need to worry through it. You just work diligently, be patient. And uh, make wise decisions as best as possible, but he's in control of the outcomes. So that's that's been uh, probably a couple of the big lessons through this time. And yeah, and don't feel like you're strapped into one spot up until then, because every other idea I looked at, you know, I, I have this entrepreneur within me that's been wanting to come out for a while. And uh, I'd always look at these other ideas and my wife would say, well, how much time would that take a week? Well, how long would that go? But I was looking at very traditional, straightforward ideas that often basically starting another business that takes 50 hours a week for the first five years. It's like, no, I, I'd have to do that either full time or not at all. And then realizing, OK, there's actually other options out there. There's other ways. So this brought me to uh, an option that's working for me. I love it. I love it. Now, I, we didn't talk about this, but I want to know what's your, do you have a favorite verse or one verse that comes to mind in scripture that you would love to share with everybody? Oh, there's a lot, but uh, favorite verse. You know, I think one of the most famous verse of the Bible that is truly one of my favorites is, is really in John three. And uh, he's meeting with a guy who is focused on how, how good does he have to be to get into heaven? 
And Jesus just responds to him and talks, speaks of God's love and says, God loved the world. Uh, and one version says, God loves the world in this way, that he sent his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And I'm so thankful that God loved us, that he sent Christ to die for our sins. And that anyone who puts their faith in him and him alone can have the assurance of eternal life. Because the reality is, Everything in this life ends. What is eternal is the people in this world. We all go somewhere eternally. And uh, Christ gives us the opportunity to eternally be with him. So that would be uh, the verse for the day. Amen. Amen. I love uh, Galatians 2.20. For I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ that lives in me. Mm -hmm. life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So absolutely. So praise the Lord for um, our friendship and God connecting us and for the Lord blessing you in your uh, ministry at the church, ministry to your family, but then also in your investing. So praise the Lord. And so uh, thank you so much, Benjamin, for coming on and giving hopefully encouragement to lots of other people that you don't have to be wealthy. You don't have to have lots of connections. You don't have to be anything other than just a normal person. And just really, if you put your head down, you try to get it done, you will get it done. So I really appreciate you coming on, Benjamin. Yeah, Dustin, thanks for having me uh, on the show. And thanks for all the help you've been as well.